Right, hello again guys, it's uh, Sendo here and today with me here is who? Hi, it's Fuzzy, the beast. Oh yeah. PK, the beast Fuzzy. I'm all out from the beginning. So yeah, my teammate PK Fuzzy will join us today for a talk on uh, basically going over the first week of Splatoon 2 and uh, kind of going over what is strong in the game at the moment and how we can, might see the game develop over time and uh, we have different topics uh, we're gonna talk about and yeah should be good stuff so just one thing i want to start before is that uh, you know we only played this game for one week so yeah, of like, course you know, a week and a half or so like we don't we don't have the final say on anything so we don't really like if we only played so much ourselves and we only so so many people playing so yeah well between us we've played around like a hundred hour each so like even saying that over you know we play a lot but it's nothing in comparison to how much we will need to play in order to have a better idea yeah yeah on, you know the things we're going to talk about and like uh hope no one takes like uh no one feels insulted <laughs> like at this point like yeah i know like who knows maybe Next week, aerospray S plus and stuff, but you know we have our opinions now, and uh, yeah, our plan is to go over them. So just uh, like uh, to begin with, we kind of have made this uh, tier list, and um, yeah, it's like a well, I I barely can call it a tier list. It's more like a, what's strong now in the game, and uh, yeah, it's not even a full tier list. It's like what's uh, really strong at the game at the moment. But yeah, I think we could go over it by like tier by tier, uh, starting with S plus, which is uh, rapid and three slots around. Uh, I think we should go like weapon by weapon and just like say why it's mm -hmm. up there and high up. So just starting with rapid, then uh, what would yeah, you I say like uh, why is rapid uh, S plus right now in the game? Well, uh, the best the best reason to I mean the best way to put to explain why rapid is so powerful right now is because. Uh, you have to look at the other weapon matchups it has, but so like in general, Rapid uh, has insane uh, control qualities. It like just controls an area extremely well. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a so one thing is that people really didn't expect Rapid to be strong without damage up. But yeah, they I didn't. Change the, they change the damage values so that you know it kills pretty you know very consistently. Yeah, with exactly. Three shots. And with a direct and uh, any sort of indirect damage, you get a two shot. Mm -hmm. So, putting those things together, uh, I mean, it, it deals consistent enough damage. But <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like the thing about rabbit is that okay, well, like like Fuzz is at it. Why it's strong is that well, not so strong like long range alternative sexist. So this is something we'll talk, talk a bit later, but everything's like existing like uh, relative to other weapons. So you know, like when we talk about rapid, we have to take in account that uh, snipers aren't that strong, so it can really like uh, have a really f free ring over the game field. And mm -hmm. also, like the I think ink mine buff is something we should mention. Well, I got the buff because some people are annoyed it doesn't kill as much, but you know, like having two ink mines. Look for flanks. That's really useful, I think, for rabbit. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, also the fact that ink mines now from Splatoon one they changed to uh, give a point sensor effect. And obviously, one thing that's missing from Splatoon one is uh, echolocator, which is you know the, basically the best special. Mm -hmm. But now instead, there's no echolocator. There's no way to point sensor people besides literally throwing a point sensor. But ink mine gives you basically a stationary point sensor that checks flanks for you. It, mm -hmm. I mean. The, the the value of that is very underrated right now. So like being able to put in mine in the you know whatever flank on whatever map, and then suddenly see someone pointed, be like, okay, this obviously uh, gives us some good information. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd say the the absolute biggest reason Rapid is strong right now is because the next three weapons in the tier list all lose to Rapid in like a you know a one v one scenario. Yeah, or a, fight. Yeah, yeah is it with me? And yeah, and of so course nice. you have like the Bomberas, which is like really nice for map control. I think also like uh, as a special it makes a lot of sense with the weapon right now. Like often, yeah, yeah. like I, I've been somewhat like a rapid main this first week. And uh, often like I notice I'm like have better 
better turfing than uh, some of my teammates with uh, weapons mm. should like fasting that thing better than rapid. So overall, I think it's very balanced weapon and like uh, Fuzzy Z like really good matchups at the moment. So that's why it's uh, they're in the highest tier list. And uh, I think we could just go over to the next one, which is uh, everyone's favorite topic these days. Nagi made a <laughs> nice video on uh, Twitter about three slosser asking it to be nerfed, and this is one example of being very popular weapon, maybe the number one most complained on like uh, event Reddit today. And three slosser was a <laughs> popular complaint to people, and uh, no someone referred sure. to it as a uh, green luna. It is pretty accurate in sense. But yeah, so okay, why is three slosser? Not alone uh, a very popular weapon to talk about, but also like uh, the highest tier now. Yeah, so uh, first off, uh, tri is the uh, only, it's Rapid and tri that we've, you know, put an S plus together. And the reason that, you know, tri is an S plus is because it has basically the, the perfect kit, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, the weapon deals 62 damage, and uh, the sub-weapon Burst Bomb deals 60 damage on a direct and 35 on indirect so mm -hmm. you're almost guaranteed kills on an indirect and you're 100 percent guaranteed on like a slosh to burst bomb mm -hmm. combo it also outranges or has the same range as all of the main meta weapons so uh, t tech and ends up basically mm -hmm. uh, which obviously uh, helps it in firefights it could shoot over walls the Actually, the terrain of the maps in Splatoon 2 like heavily favor tri slash here. Like if you go through the maps, you can see a lot of maps where uh, the terrain is kind of hilly or you know vertical and small area and like uh, big choke points. I mean, so mm -hmm. all that lends to like having the tri slash here have some really good matchups. Plus, it's not useless in open combat. It's burst bombs that outrange you know every short range shooter. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, the slosher itself has decent range, so like, it's always in a decent situation at least. And at best, it's just insta killing people like uh, Grim did uh, with the comp burst bomb combo. Yeah, I think the combo is an interesting thing because that's of course something that was connected to the vanilla slosher from the first game. Mm -hmm. So that was something like uh, what made the weapon fuller in the first place was that you could you was able to combo people a lot. So of course it's interesting in this game that the uh, vanilla slosher now has suction bomb and. Uh, Resolver has uh, the combo instead with burst bomb, so mm -hmm. that's interesting. Yeah, sure. But uh, also, like, uh, well, another really popular topic people are talking about is, of course, the ink armor. So probably that's, uh, yeah. that's the tri that's slasher. the second part. Yeah, so the tri slasher is ink armor is a special, and uh, it got nerfed already within the first, you know, mm -hmm. takes days. longer to charge now if uh, people don't know. Yeah, it, it went from 180 uh, points needed to uh, 210, which is the heaviest nerf among all the weapons with 96. Uh, Gal having the same exact uh, number nerf for its ink armor. And um, basically this makes it go from, you know, it, it, I would say the pre-ink armor nerf uh, tri slasher was borderline broken. But now I would say that tri slasher is perfectly fine strong that's so strong yeah. meta weapon yeah it's a str very strong weapon it has a fantastic kit fantastic special uh i i think in no way is ink armor even remotely broken or busted or anything mm -hmm. i think just it's strong. really really good special but you know really it, it relies on your team a lot so yeah it's another just interesting mechanic a global armor is very interesting and i think a lot of teams will continue to improve with this special but yeah so tri slasher has a strong special, a perfect sub for it, and is is strong. I don't think there's really any reason to complain. I, I don't even see the reason to compare it to uh, Luna and Splatoon One, like or uh, whatever weapon you you'd like to complain about uh, in Splatoon One or Two. Yeah, it's a it's, just... it's a bit different than anything. Uh, that's in Splatoon One, that's also true. Yeah, but yeah, I, I guess the last thing about it is that tri slasher in Splatoon One, this weapon was not really good. And, you know, people like playing the weapon. It's like an interesting take on the game, being able to play this weapon in this fashion. Same, like, same with Slosher, but Slosher became meta due to the combo later. But now that it's good, this weapon, Tri Slosher in Splatoon 2, people will just immediately start complaining. Like, I think we should enjoy the fact that we have a non-shooter weapon dominating the tier list. I think that's very interesting, very fun. Like, it's a, it's a different way to even play the game. The mm -hmm. aiming is different, the everything. So. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that's uh, three slosser, and I think uh, yep. going to the near next uh, tier, we have a uh, S with T Tech and Enchop, and uh, I think T Tech should be something uh, of a uh, like uh, 
Well, m m most people probably can uh, realize why it's up there, but uh, since it's your main, you can probably like open up a little like why it's still strong. Like it's still like a, it no longer has Sink Suk and it, it now has uh, Splat Bomb, which was a uh, Wasabi sub from Splat mm -hmm. One. So why it's still like a uh, why it's still a strong weapon? Like uh, because uh, uh, okay, yeah. So uh, I mean, I can make a whole uh, video or ten about T Tech and T Tech mm -hmm. comparisons from one and two, but. Uh, I would say generally the role of Tentec in Splatoon 1 and 2 hasn't changed. And that's really interesting that they kept basically a mirror kit. I mean, Inkjet is basically the Inzuka of Splatoon 2. And, you know, Splash, uh, Splat Bomb to Suction Bomb is not a, you know, majorly different. It definitely is different, but not, you know, nothing too major. And uh, so the role of T-Tech is basically primarily a Slayer. Uh, and But the the benefit of Tenetech is that it can also help in every other situation. It's a jack of all trades, but really not the you know not really the king of any. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. That like sometimes when I'm playing, I could play the main slayer. I could turf a lot. I could help people kill, not necessarily kill themselves, but you know throw bombs from a distance. Oh, you know all sorts of mm -hmm. uh, different uh, jobs Tenetech can fulfill. Yeah. Uh, the reason we have an S tier. In my opinion, it's going to be weaker over time. But as of now, uh, the weapons that we just explained, Rapid and Trice Usher, and then the next with Enzap, it it, it uh, competes with them decently enough in, with like a slightly different kit than Slosher and Enzap and uh, uh, more attacking persons than uh, Rapid. But it also is like almost perfect teammates for the these uh, weapons at the time. Mm -hmm. So basically it's a perfectly, it, it feeds perfectly off of ink armor from teammates. Like uh, everyone would probably be very nervous if there was a ten attack with bubble in Splatoon 1 and that's uh, basically what we're getting. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, the, in, a, in a team based format. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, ink chat is definitely pretty helpful. So I'm not gonna go into ink chat. I think it's like, yeah, I, I think uh, we pretty much covered it pretty well. Like that's the summary yeah. of it. Is that it's like the best uh, all around during the game. Yep. It's, it's anyway, yeah, but I think right. the next one is even like even more interesting in the sense that uh, I think that's a common theme with many things that things that were many things that were strong in Splatoon One are now not as strong, and things that on the other hand were like uh, you know not as good. Like received some buffs, but not really you know the popular stuff. You, you know. The kind of weapons you see in your team, and you're like, well, why does he have to play that? Like, you know, we all, yeah. all we all know this thing, but uh, so Enchap, so when the world like now Nike people knew you and see little man now he's manning Enchap. Like, what, what when the world happened here? Yeah, almost every team seems to be running one at this uh, at this point, and that's uh, yeah, certainly a surprise. Um, with Enchap, I don't really have uh, too much, you know crazy insight on this weapon, but I will say that it's definitely an interesting, almost maybe hybrid between a support and a slayer with the Tenetech. It's like similarities to T-Tech and a shooter as a suction bomb and also the support aspect with, uh, you know, it has ink armor as a special. Yeah, I mean, and one, a small interesting thing that it has, it's ink armor costs 10 points less than a tri slasher in 96. So mm -hmm. it costs 200 points, which, yeah. is, you know, is, Marginally very, uh, marginally helpful for the weapon. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the biggest thing here, like why it sounds like so much in like uh, relative power ranking, is just that kit is just so much better. Like you look at suction uh, in karma, just like an uh, insane kit compared to first mm -hmm. game. It had uh, like um, Spat bomb echo, Spat bomb echo, and yeah, like still like on paper maybe a strong kit, but it's it's not quite the same in the in the bigger yeah, theme of things. Sure. So like sprinkler, no, it's not. It's just. I think uh, the here, here like it really makes the weapon. That's not to say it's not a strong uh, shooter. I think it's a really strong shooter in this game at the moment. But yeah, something that really goes well in every team comp. So definitely, yeah, it's like a very good uh, support. It's the best support weapon for sure. Like pure support weapon. You don't really play it for kills so much, but uh, you get the ink on the ground. You get the armors. Uh, you kind of aid in kills, of course. You got a big uh, bomb with your suction. A lot of ink control, map denial. Mm -hmm. So. Once again, it fits into the theme of this game being like a lot of team fights, and uh, it really supports with map control and ink armors, which is a very powerful uh, special right now. So yeah, it just yeah. fits very well. So that being that, here we next hand uh, we have A plus, which is a bit bigger there, 
with the Octobras Minis Battling Firefin uh, Splat Salter Scoped Edition. Uh, then we have the regular blaster and custom blaster. So that's a lot of weapons, but uh, let's go with them one by one still. Yeah, yeah. So first sure. one, Octobras, which is uh, something... Uh, if you watch our streams, you maybe uh, heard us a uh, word or two about it. It is... Uh, yeah, but like, uh, why is Octobras strong? Like, let's uh, let's uh, forget about the annoyance, like the annoying rating, and just talk about like why is it so strong? Like again, one weapon that was in a very marginal role in Splatoon One, and now suddenly it's a pretty good weapon. So, why do you mm -hmm. think the change? Uh, okay, so with Octobras, uh, I'm not 100 percent sure on the damage calculations. Uh, as far as I know, they uh, they buffed the base it's... damage. So uh, I watched uh, Silver's video, pretty good video. I can yeah, uh, link it in the description. Mention. But uh, yeah. yeah, the base damage is buffed, so the equivalent to, one, I believe, one main of damage from Splatoon 1 is what he said. Okay. So it's, it's kind of the same thing as Rabbit, where they buffed the base damage to compensate for the fact that you can no longer stack damage with the weapon. So I think, yeah, that's okay. of, of course a part of it. Yeah, so that, that would be my first thing to say. If you're interested in the weapon, watch Silver's video. I'm yeah. sure he has a lot of insight. He played the weapon in Splatoon 1 a lot. Yeah, so if, if you need something more with that, but in general, yeah, the, the, so the damage is uh, buffed and because of this, the weapon kills insanely fast. It's It, it really reminds me of a, like a combination of a Splatoon 1 Luna and Splatoon 1 Carbon, which is well, definitely not going to give people a very good impression of what I think of this weapon. Uh, like, it's very powerful. I won't go into why I dislike it personally, but it's... It has a very good range both forward and horizontally like almost it seems like almost dynamo range horizontally on its flicks mm -hmm. and the the forward range rivals t-tech not to mention it could still kill uh, enemies above like uh, i've been killed many times in my jetpack from an octobrush the range does not is not there's not lacking range uh, for this weapon for sure mm -hmm. which is pretty interesting because it seems that that was basically its biggest weakness in Splatoon 1, uh, the lack of range. Um, it's kit, auto bomb, and uh, auto bomb and inkjet. Also, is very. It just destroys uh, patient teams, teams like turtle, teams that camp. Auto bomb is just devastating for chargers. It just like it totally removes the ability to hide an ink and try to like ambush opponents so it's basically a point sensor in the sense that it could actually seek opponents out that are hiding in ink around the corners up on top of uh higher ground etc and inkjet perfectly follows up with that if uh, they're up above or if they're hiding in ink then you could just pop your inkjet get to different terrain and uh you know wipe them out basically yeah uh yeah, I think uh, the biggest thing with Octobrush is that it kills people incredibly fast now. And uh, it doesn't seem like if you get caught by an Octobrush, it seems like there's virtually no chance of escaping. As if like other weapons, you could juke and dodge a little bit, avoid the shots, get around cover. Yeah, but, but the, the decree that uh, Octobrush kills at like rather the when you start flicking, you kill like everything like uh, in a significant on your screen. Way. I kill ever yeah, in the screen, so that's like low, low uh, chance of failing. So yeah. that would be octopus. And next we have a mini, which is something I can probably say a couple of words on since I yeah, just sure. been my uh, other main. And uh, originally, I believe we, we had it like one tier upper, like S tier. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, like I feel like it's very uh, mode dependent in that. Um, Mm -hmm. Splat zones, very strong weapon, but then uh, we go DC, we go Rainmaker, it's uh, not the same anymore. But still, like, uh, yeah, I think sure. uh, it still retains the incredible inking from Splatoon 1. And uh, mm -hmm. I was very pessimistic about the kit. But uh, it turns out missiles are really good, and it turns out <laughs> burst bombs are still pretty helpful, and winning 1v1s and uh, harassing people outside of your range and uh, whatnot. So. All around, I, I think the same reason why it was in very strong in Splatoon 1 is why it's strong in Splatoon 2, so great thinking and uh, great special. And do you have a, yeah. anything other like special in mind for this one? Uh, yeah, just like a quick thing based on like Senda mentioned that we initially had it one up, so in S tier. And just real quick, the reason that we, well, I, I asked him, you know, mentioned to him that we should maybe bring it down a tier is that 
it's not necessarily that strong on Remaker and Tower Control, not as strong as it is on Splat Zones, and also, uh, Rapid Blaster is just totally dominating at the moment, and, uh, Mini kind of has a weird time with Rapid, since it can't approach the Rapid, so it kind of just gets destroyed by Rapid Blaster, and Rapid kind of fits the, the meta combat at the moment a little better, which is basically, uh, Tri Slasher, ends up Tantic, mm -hmm. and Rapid. Yeah. So that, that's basically a yeah. quick explanation there. And uh, then the only charge here on the list would be again the Firefin. So we'll talk a bit more about charges later, but like uh, maybe we can touch now like why Firefin is the only charge I made to the list. Okay. Yeah, so uh, Firefin, it has a splash wall. So I think. Uh, I th Thing with maybe Flingzo Roller, the only weapon that uh, has Splash Wall so far in Splatoon 2, which is pretty interesting. Splash Wall received another I think, nerf. I thought Flingzo only is getting Splash Wall in a update. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But so, something else has Splash Wall. I think a roll. I think one of the rollers does. But uh, regardless, maybe. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, you know, Fire Fin is basically the only weapon. Uh, or, you know, one of two weapons with uh, Splash Wall. And Splash Wall received another nerf to its uh, activation time, I guess I could say. You know, how long it takes for the actual wall to, you know, be deployed. Which is pretty interesting because uh, I don't think it really needed another nerf. But, you know, regardless, uh, it fits with the Charger Kit well because right now in the meta, you're getting uh, kind of abused by everyone. <laughs> Everything. Everything is against chargers, it seems. We'll go over that yeah, later. We but, uh, yeah. uh, for Firefin specifically, its kit has a Suction Rush as a special, which is just completely fantastic for uh, holding an area. So it really helps in Splat Zones, where chargers usually struggle a bit. And then it still, of course, is a charger. So on Rainmaker and Tower Control, it can uh, basically immediately stop pushes if in the right position. And that's pretty much it. Chargers are not very strong right now, but if there was a charger to be picked, it would be uh, this one. Yeah, and I also like want to mention the special. I think it's also a very good complement. Same as Rapid. Special mm -hmm. helping with uh, lackluster ink output. And really, like on some stages, uh, I still think Bomb Rush is the king. And uh, yeah. yeah, one of those Bomb Rush options is Firefin currently. So yep. that's why. And uh, I think we can go, go together with uh, Blaster and Custom Blaster. Blaster and Custom Blaster. So sure. that's uh, probably, you have probably played more than me at this point. So Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I think so. so yeah. I really uh, enjoy it. But, I, yeah, I mean, Sendo is the Blaster, uh, only Blaster player on uh, Team Olive, and basically the longest tenured Blaster player, maybe in, like, all of Splatoon, he played a lot of uh, Blaster. But I have been playing more Blaster than him in Splatoon 2, because uh, he, he, he doesn't like it. But I see I see the future, you which see the is the Blaster meta. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, but, I mean, a regular Blaster's kit is... Uh, Toxic Mist and Splashdown, and Custom Blaster's kit is uh, Auto Bomb and Inkjet, so same as uh, Octobush. Uh, so basically, with um, with regular Blaster, in my opinion, I think it's a uh, I think Blaster in general is pretty strong. Uh, it got nerfed again. Uh, its jumping accuracy is nerfed, so when you jump and shoot, uh, you can uh, stall the shot in a little bit to uh, make it a really accurate shot, and also. Uh, Besides that, it, the shot is just goes all over the place. It's, yeah, just uh, what's my other video if you wanna see the actual yeah, like yeah, nerf in action. Mid. Yeah, you can see how difficult it, uh, it it really is to aim at the moment with the blaster while jumping. But regardless, uh, regular blaster I think has a really good place on uh, tower control and maybe a little bit on Rainmaker right now because of toxic mist and toxic mist really can stall a choke point. Which uh, you know is obviously very prevalent on tower control. The tower is a set path, and Rainmaker usually has a few, not set paths, but paths that uh, the players have defined as good or bad. Uh, so yeah, I uh, I think it's pretty strong there. It still has the one shot or two shot kill. It's still uh, you know does tons of damage, tons of chip damage. Fits into team comps in that uh, aspect very well. But it is pretty atrocious at turfing and can't confirm kills the way even a Rapid Blaster can at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as Custom Blaster goes, I don't have nearly as much experience with that, but I've talked to other Blaster players who seem to really like the kit, really think it's a, a powerful kit, 
And I can see what they're saying. It has the same kid as Octobrush. I have played Tenant Tech hunt, uh, like 100 hours already. I know how strong Inkjet potentially can be. Uh, Autobomb is incredibly annoying. I've stated this just before. So yeah, the, the kit with Blaster and regular Blaster. I feel like um, if I was giving like a comparison of how the kit works, you could compare it to how like Tenetech and Wasabi and Splatoon 1, where it eventually as the meta kept, you know, ex advancing towards the end of the game, uh, you basically you'd pick Tenetech on one map and Wasabi on another map. They complemented each other based on the, the map. So that, I think that's something that's going to happen with the blasters. You pick uh, regular blaster for tower control, whatever, and then you pick... Uh, custom blaster for splat zones whatever i think that's pretty interesting actually i enjoy the fact that uh it's not very often you are able to see like uh, two sub categories of the same weapon coexist usually there's one that is just uh, superior mm -hmm. but i think we'll see something like that with the blasters yeah. definitely again like the common uh, thing about all of these weapons is that the kit is very strong and that's definitely the case with blasters like two really strong kits Mm -hmm. And around the weapon itself is still solid, so that's probably like the summary of it. And again, like, mm -hmm. uh, we could go over this together with the A tier. We, a tier we have a uh, 96 and H3. So again, this has some weapons that uh, you have played, so you probably can, uh, mm -hmm. we yeah, can sure. even do some uh, this together. Yeah, uh, I'll go to 96 a little bit first. And the very first thing I want to say is that I said it before, but I will repeat it because I uh, I initially thought 96 was S tier when it first came out, but now the uh, special, uh, the amount of uh, ink you need to get your special ink armor has increased from 180 to 210, and this this occurred for Tri Slasher 96 and uh, 180 to 200 for Enzap, but it really hit 96 the hardest because 96 is the worst turf out of these three weapons naturally, and uh, also the least aggressive, so it's the least uh, probable to be going on like kill streaks where you, you see maybe like weapons like Luna and Tenetech get their special basically based off of uh, killing people to, to turf like that's mm -hmm. how they're getting their uh, turf they're killing the people uh, their opponents so I had high hopes for 96 when I saw the kit and the meta but uh, yeah I think the special nerf really hurts it and I think uh, we're gonna have to wait for 96 deco to really get a possibility of having an S tier 96 uh, but, but, but why would you say like it's uh, why it's up there because it's still like uh, if you put it to an A tier it's still like uh, triumphs yeah, over many weapons weapon. so is, is it uh, like a uh, ink armor is it like a uh, actual weapon like what makes it still like better than uh, most other long okay. range shooters in the game yeah so uh, if you're comparing it to long range shooters uh, it still has the edge over a lot of weapons and uh, killing power and consistency in killing power and um, The sprinkler really helps with map control, but it's kind of dependent on uh, How the control that your team has sprinkler doesn't really get you control from a losing situation, but it can certainly like uh, Keep the control under a already positive situation and uh, Ink armor is definitely the most helpful of any of the specials for a long-range shooter right now so yeah, that, that's why it's still strong, but definitely much, I would say probably the heaviest nerf weapons of this like a very early initial uh, nerf that happened to the specials. Mm -hmm. um, and then so you go to H3, and H3 and 96 historically are kind of intertwined uh, because they shared similar kits, the Deco and the uh, Cherry H3 and Splatoon 1, and they serve similar roles on their team. So for H3, a lot better inking, um, on the weapon itself than the 96, but it trades it off with a lot less uh, consistent killing power. It still has great potential killing power, but the consistency of the shots is kind of difficult, uh, basically due to human, uh, you know, human error. That it shoots in a three-shot burst, so sometimes it's quite difficult to land all three shots. You need to hit all three to get a kill. Mm -hmm. um, there, uh, it has a point sensor and uh, Tenta missiles as a special. So if we were to make another special tier list, it would be dominated by Tenta missile and uh, ink armor. So those are good signs. I think most of the weapons you see in this tier list so far have uh, Tenta missiles, ink armor, ink chip. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, H3 able to support from the back with the missiles. It works very well with like the nature of the weapons kind of sitting back. And point sensors, uh, 
maybe the weak point of this uh, kit, why it, maybe H3 is not very strong, uh, like compared to, you know, to other weapons, why it's not like A plus or even S tier. Maybe because of the, uh, in my opinion, the point sensor kind of holding it back. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's pretty much it with these two yep. weapons. They, they kind of, uh, they're they're close to what the game uh, should have for uh, long range shooters. They're not quite strong enough individually, but I think with like a couple of tweaks here and there, maybe get the new kit for each weapon, and then uh, they'll be able to like have a very strong meta placement. Uh, yeah. And uh, sure. next time we do this, maybe. Yeah, and uh, for the next section, I have uh, kind of like uh, want to talk a bit about since you like I've been keeping up with uh, Japanese players more, and of mm -hmm. course uh, Splatoon 2 came out in Japan as well, so they've been playing a lot of Splatoon 2. So what would you say like uh, your first impressions are like how some weapons are more popular maybe in other regions than others? Like because I know there's some examples you probably like mentioned them, but. Um, mm -hmm. Especially like some weapons or maybe some like mindsets already that are different uh, from Japan compared to West. So this is something yeah, like. So, you... uh, okay, I could. I haven't uh, like spoken to my Japanese friends or you know uh, contacts as much as I did you know in Splatoon One because I'm kind of busy uh, doing my own thing. Plus, regional matchmaking makes it so that we don't actually play them. So we're I'm kind of just in this awkward situation where. I can't directly uh, test and communicate with things them, but uh, communicate things with them. But you know, I still talk to them, and I guess the first thing I noticed that is like totally shocking to me. I can't understand is that they use a uh, N Perry Splat Dulies above Tanatech often. And N Perry Splat Dulies are a uh, dually weapon, the second dually, and the kit is a curling bomb inkjet. And the, I guess the most interesting thing about N Perry Splat Dulies is that. It, it has 170 points to get special, so 170 points to get the inkjet. And I, I think that like kind of leads me to like what Japan thinks compared to how we, I mean, how Japan thinks compared to how we think, is that these uh, old T Tech players are actually just playing uh, N Perry Squad Dulies, which has less range and overall uh, less killing power than a Ten Tech. And they literally told me. I had spoke to a few of them. They literally say like, "Yeah, we only play inkjet. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. we, they only go for their special. They only you use the special. Basically, they basically AFK paint the map. You know, when they don't have their inkjet up, which is pretty interesting. And uh, in my opinion, uh, not necessarily the correct or incorrect way to play, but like, uh, it shows like a cultural chain, a cultural difference, honestly, between America and the Western scene, and. Uh, Japan, where these people shamelessly AFK paint the map until they get special, and it's praised. Meanwhile, if you were to uh, AFK paint into a special in America, you make it called skillless or something along those lines. Yeah, that's like something I wanted to mention. Like, do you think it's already like, uh, because in my opinion, Splatoon 1, like Japanese at least, uh, had earlier than us, they had this uh, special focused mindset. Like many mm -hmm. weapons, very popular simply because you know they get fast bubble and uh, they have strong special, and you know yeah, the sure. actual like uh, main weapon maybe sometimes comes secondary. So do you think uh, mm -hmm. what we're seeing now with dualis is just like an extension of that, or? Yeah, I think it's a basically like a like a precursor to what is to come because uh, Splatoon Two, as we know, like doesn't have uh, bubble and kraken, none of these specials that were widely complained about. But it does have, in my opinion anyway, I think the specials are relatively stronger than they were in Splatoon 1. Mm -hmm. So I think that specials are even more dominant in this game uh, than Splatoon 1. Yeah, getting your like something like everyone has to remember when talking is that, alright, kill time, average kill time is, I mean, uh, that time is much higher in this game. Because mm -hmm. there's not yeah, like yeah, a yeah. quick respawn always to fall back to, like if that, you get kills then there's no way you're gonna get the quick respawn bonus. So. That's, you know, like exactly. uh, something to always keep in mind is that, all right, maybe bubble is like in absolute sense, maybe it's stronger than ink armor, yeah. but in relative mm -hmm. sense, where every kill matters more now, it might actually be stronger. So always have to keep in mind that we don't exit in like vacuum. We just uh, play mm -hmm. the game and everything like it comes to in relation to that. So I think yeah, that's that's uh, a, that's, a, that's an excellent point. Basically, yeah, what what I what I would love to uh, have said myself. <laughs> but uh <laughs> now that so seriously he's he's completely right uh, 
yeah, I mean, Bubble and Kraken are probably individually much stronger, but the way the game plays out without Quick Respawn is that every life matters much more. So therefore, getting your special matters much, much more. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're rushing in and dying, getting uh, one special a game, it now shows on the uh, end game screen and you'll probably get berated by your teammates on the internet. Yeah, um, maybe for a good reason, because that's really yeah. like how the games have won at the moment. Because, uh, yeah, and, and, and there's no... What I would love to have people understand is that there's no shame in winning the game off of your sub and special rather than shooting them in the face. This is not a, this is an objective based shooter. It's not a team deathmatch. And mm -hmm. I know everyone always says this. Like I hear this time and time again, team deathmatch, team deathmatch, yada yada yada. But it's it's the truth. Like uh, you you, it's not a game where everything is about shooting people with your gun. Mm -hmm. As we notice, uh, very obviously, there are weapons that don't shoot at all. They have rollers and buckets and brushes and all sorts of weapons that don't directly shoot people so to uh claim more skill higher skill less skill no skill based on the uh main weapon really makes no sense to me mm -hmm. and i think that's a, basically the biggest thing between the western scene and japan like overall is that they play to win the game and uh, a lot of our players seem to play for like some abstract sense of pride which uh it's a different really mindset sense to me. but the end. yeah yeah yeah, but I mean, uh, that, that's basically the biggest difference. Uh, another weapon, uh, maybe that Japan uses that we don't. Uh, nothing really comes to mind, actually. But uh, yeah, that's you know, still they, like a. Yeah. It's, a, it's just mean, the Duelist first is... week. I mean, it's just the first week. Yeah, of course. So like, and we uh, don't have that many weapons anyway. So. Yeah, I guess the the last thing I I will say, just quickly, is that the sniper players for. Uh, the, like the pure sniper players in Splatoon 1 in Japan, they haven't uh, necessarily given up on the snipers. And I think if uh, people are interested in uh, watching sniper gameplay, as a lot of sniper mains from Splatoon uh, 1 in the Western scene have quit, it, quit the weapon, it, I mean, you could watch them. They basically only use Firefin, and uh, I think it'd be pretty interesting to uh, check them out if you are indeed interested. Um, yeah, that's basically it for the Japanese. I mean, as we go along, we'll definitely see as we get more direct contact with them, mm -hmm. maybe play some scrims tournaments with the Japanese and really get a better understanding. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll take it from there. And uh, I think that bridges it nicely to our next topic because, like, Fuzzy mentioned about the Tartars. That's uh, been one of the like uh, hot topic. I feel like many people have been talking about this. So, of course, sniper mains, for sure, the most of all. But. Uh, like when you look at Splatoon 1, I think uh, snipers were always like throughout the game's life cycle a huge topic and they received various nerfs and I think at least in Italy they were like very very strong and then maybe once the nerfs came and the game kind of changed it over with a quick respawn, maybe they weren't quite as strong in the late game but they were still like very viable thing to have as your backbone of the team, like it's still like something you could run, like it was like not necessarily a bad thing, and especially like tower control and rainmaker objective mm -hmm. pushes being made. Charter was really nice to have like in the backlines. But uh, now comes uh, Splatoon 2, and we have players like Nike playing Antap, and we have a. Uh, but uh, but uh, I, 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 yeah, what's power and he streams like spaddling like every day. So like, mm -hmm. so I think many people are at least, if not given up, at least very down on the like. Almost everyone seems very down on snipers. I haven't yeah. seen many like praise uh, about snipers in Splatoon 2 in general, but it's really sniper. Basically, only uh, not, uh, Brian, right from Confess, enjoys the uh, new unscoped mechanic, and that's the only positive thing I've seen. Yeah, so that's far. about that's that's again like that's almost like a different weapon to me. Yeah, yeah. But he yeah, had like yeah, it really is. But like uh, to like uh, come off the talking point here, I wanted to maybe maybe like ask like why why is that like w what were the nerves that made the charts like not so. Like, why, why is it so bad at the moment? Like, of course, not neither of us main charges, but we still hear about them. And, mm -hmm. like, yeah, and, you know, both of us still uh, enjoy Charger, actually. Uh, and Sendo played a lot of Charger at the beginning of the yeah, game, main, and I always enjoyed it. Main, so. Yeah, so, I mean, we're not totally enough to answer the question. Plus, we uh, played with maybe the best Charger player, you know, that we, that we know mm -hmm. for a very long time. So, you know, just going into it. Uh, first, uh, the uh, most obvious thing is the uh, removal of damage uh, from the game, mm -hmm. which basically enabled chargers to get uh, half charge kills, quarter charger kills, uh, you know, no charge tap shot kills, etc., etc. Yeah, uh, I think like Bob Bauer was maybe the 
master of this at least like I, I don't remember like how many times I'm like uh, going in for the certain like kill and then I get like a quarter tap shot from like the corner of the map <laughs> like crazy yeah. jumping tap shots to uh -huh. burst bombs like overall I, th I think the the fact like if people know like with charger you now have to full charge to kill to like mm -hmm. deal over 100 damage and this is different from the first game where it was possible to basically like only charge like a quarter way if you were or like not quarter way but like uh, not all the way and then if you have damage then yeah. you're still able to deal over 100 damage killing people in one shot so mm -hmm. that's i think uh, yeah. the biggest change or nerf to the charge in spot oh, yeah, yeah for sure for sure for sure uh, the the damage removal ends up being the biggest nerf for chargers but there's also i think sendo maybe is one of the first people to really like uh put this into words and understand the uh the meta as is or the specials or maybe the and not even that maybe just more literally the game design of uh, the splatoon 2 developers and it seems that they went in a direction where they really wanted to say like f you to chargers well more or it, less it, uh so look quickly some examples we have auto bomb which seeks people behind cover it, incredibly annoying for chargers who would uh, enjoy staying still for more than uh, half a second uh, then we have Tent of Missiles, another heat-seeking across the map uh, annoyance, basically. Can insta-kill you from uh, out of nowhere. Maybe, say maybe you're playing E-Leader and you're scoped in and you're not uh, exactly aware that these missiles are coming for you. Mm -hmm. uh, suddenly you will unscope and you'll be dead. And like a good thing to note about uh, stuff like Tent of Missiles and Inkarma is that you don't have to be where the fight is to activate them. Or like get yeah. a you should out of them. In the case of Tenta missiles, you even get more out of them if you aren't like where the fight is going on. Like that's how they're designed yeah, to yeah. work. So in Splatoon 1, like one big uh, like uh, role for Charger was that, okay, this guy has bubble in, he's coming in, I'm gonna snipe him. Oh, okay, well he didn't get the bubble off. And now he has mm -hmm. to charge it again and that's like a really huge skill. Like maybe he only gets five kills, but if two of them are on targets with bubble, that's actually like MVP material already. So now people pop the ink armor, like they ink their spawn and they pop it like in, in their spawn. <laughs> like, they literally yeah, like yeah. there's nothing you can do to force it and then when you mm. start sniping you, you you like hear the invisibility sound like echoing off like it's like yeah. really like a awkward situation for charges at the moment like all the specials seem to work against them and they really aren't in position to force them either to, to yeah, how the game works and they can so for an instance with the uh, ink armor yeah like i said they said they literally cannot kill a person with ink armor because not only do they have to full charge to kill people but now they have to full charge twice in order to kill this person with ink armor. Yeah, that's like who may, may not, who may or may not even be the person who was ink armoring in the first place. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a global special. So suddenly, uh, all four of your opponents are invincible to your first shot, which is incredibly, if, if nothing else, incredibly discouraging. It's like, oh my god, I, you know, I. I even when I hit the shot, it doesn't even count. Like uh, something like that may be really dis disheartening. And I think uh, another thing is definitely about the uh, like if you look at Splatoon one e leaders. First of all, uh, Vanilla has a burst from a sub weapon. It's still like a very strong like close range alternative, especially like coupled with uh, depth shots. Again, like going back to power, like he was one of the uh, like uh, really good at utilizing this is like top shots to burst from combo like. Elita was like no soak in close quarters, like that's that's different from oh, like uh, many other games. Is that yeah, uh, yeah. And, like you, you I actually? Yeah, I actually advise against fighting power in close quarters. That's how good the weapon and he w was at close quarters. I would actually tell my teammates just don't even go near him; he will just die. And even that's then, even like if you're not power and you have no skill, then you know there's good <laughs> custom melee there. So still, like if you go ahead to charge her and. Well, he always has like the possibility to, you know, press the right stick and, uh, you know, come out as uh, a yeah. as the victor. But now yeah, I, I'm yeah. like a rabbit. Like a lot of I do with charges is that I just rush them, and well, mm. there's not much they can do. Like they can, uh, they can look at me very meanly, or like they can <laughs> use the charge time, which is like five years now. And yeah, well, yeah. it's just like it, I almost feel sorry for them. But that's like a lot of lot of reason why the charger is so like not so good yeah, at the yeah, moment yeah. is that they really can't uh, handle handle any enemies in close quarters at the moment even if you have mm -hmm. got like aim it's a uh, weapon limitations really work against you here yeah. for sure and uh one the thing i i agree with the uh, splatoon 2 developers if this was their intent was that 
no one necessarily wants Charger to be the best weapon in the game. It, it's kind of a degenerate to have the game decided by someone across the map. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, uh, I do think Charger is in a place where it shouldn't be. It, mm -hmm. it's, it seems almost useless to me. Besides the Firefin, because it has uh, exceptional map control with with the suction bomb rush and added survivability with the splat, uh, splash wall. Um, besides that, it, I mean, it, it just seems that they did a little too much to the weapon to make it, I mean, gen generally useless. Like it, it really feels. I, I uh, personally, I haven't been in a game yet that seemed to be decided by a charge of dominating. Yeah, it's more like in Vin squads when you get a sniper, you're like, well, we gotta try hard now because you know. Be down a player. Yeah. Well, that's that's like sad, but that's what it came down to. Yeah. yeah but okay, yeah. like, yeah. like uh, just go. uh, going forward with the mm -hmm. topic is that uh, since you seem to have like uh, Splatoon developers on the hotline on Twitter, and uh, if you <laughs> beat at them, then beta changes yeah, yeah, in yeah. a day. So, <laughs> so all all that considered, then uh, how how would you like uh, if you if like uh, you were the director of Splatoon two for a day, like how how would you go about buffing charges like there's a many success um, like I, I saw like uh, I think Latias uh, on Twitter if you don't know like a uh, late sniper for blue ring doctolings in the Splatoon yes, 2 yes, yes. E2 yeah. tournament said that uh, she would wish that uh, charges would at least like shoot through in karma basically so mm -hmm. like one hit KO that like that's uh, one success I've seen and then Odyssey maybe charges should again like kill a uh, Less than uh, you know full charge. Basically, get the damage boost that uh, maybe like Octoprush and Rabbit code. And then rabbit, so, yeah. I, 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 do you think like uh, this kind of buffs would be a good uh, idea, or do you have something else in mind that could maybe help charge a bit? Uh, well, uh, I don't necessarily agree with uh, what Ladia said, but I appreciate the fact that uh, she's thinking, right? Like that people, you know, we know it's in a bad place, and it's one thing to sit there and complain that your weapon is bad, and it's another thing to Make a critical thought. And I actually I I like the idea, but I don't necessarily agree. Anyway, what I do agree with is making a partial shot, a killing shot. Um, as, as far as we know so far, no chargers have uh, burst bombs, which uh, you know really just made E leader over the top back in the day mm -hmm. between one. Um, I think it's not beyond reason to have the charger kill in a ninety percent shot at a much shorter range than the fully charged shot. I, I don't see why that can't be the case. I, I, Chargers, I, I always said this uh, in Splatoon 1 when I thought Chargers were too good in close range, was that you don't want them to be good at long range, good at short range, and you can't do anything no matter where you are. But now it seems like they're pretty bad at long range and uh, completely useless at short range. Mm -hmm. So it's gone the exact opposite direction. Actually, me saying that, I did not mention this earlier, but uh, charger shots, the actual uh, bullet coming out of it, the actual projectile itself, the velocity is actually slowed a bit mm -hmm. in Splatoon 1. So, uh, one, if you go into the training room and you are you know, practicing your charger, and then you go into the left side where the moving targets are, if you are you know, a person watching this video and you thought to yourself, hey, when that uh, third... Uh, squid is moving the farthest back squid when he's moving and i shoot at him uh the shot doesn't seem to hit uh, maybe my aim is really bad against faster moving targets and that's not necessarily the case uh for whatever reason they made it so that if you have the hit marker you know on if you have the x on your uh, circle when you're shooting people mm -hmm. it, it just won't hit they won't hit that squid uh, i don't know why they did that again it makes no sense to me uh but it's not you you have to lead the shot now apparently uh, yeah. So that's just another nerf to this weapon that. Uh, I mean that yeah, that, that even, was even nerf, not this kind of nerf. Like this is uh, over the top everywhere. Yeah, for sure. Right. I mean that was still kind of the case in Splatoon One. Like I remember one common misconception being that some weapons in Splatoon One were hit scan, where in fact everything's yeah, pr uh, projectile based. And if you don't know what that mm -hmm. means, hit scan essentially means that when you pre press like the button to shoot, like it just checks is your cursor on the target. If it is, then you get a hit. And if it's not, then you don't get a hit. And projectile base is that every time you like press the trigger, you send a projectile forward, and then that projectile will determine whether you get a hit or not. And there's like a more like a, like how you would expect the real gun or like the real gun to you know work basically.
So mm -hmm. that's definitely like uh, lots of nerves for Charger. I think uh, one thing at least I personally want to say is that I don't really agree on like uh, like some people suggest that maybe we should like you know buff the range or something like you know more range. Yeah. You know that's good. But like I, I, I think that's that's like uh, something like like Fuzzy said. Like, do you really want the games to be decided by some uh, guy holding a long stick in the corner of the map, which you can't even reach, factually speaking? And then like it, it <laughs> I understand that if you charge a main, the, yep, yeah, you probably say yeah, I do. But you know, for the <laughs> three like four people on the opposite team, uh, it's not it's not so fun. Like at the moment, I still like the fact that all right, charges have to play more forward, meaning they're more accessible, like you can actually get to them. And mm -hmm. maybe if they bring back the partial charges, so you can still like tap shot people if, in close quarters if you're good enough, then that's like a fair and balanced uh, change, I think. Yeah, so definitely yeah. something I look for about this, that one. And just yeah, to... I mean, uh, hmm, did you have something else to say? Uh, not really, I, I just wanted to basically say like, yeah, we're, we're not a... Two people that uh, despise chargers when chargers, but at the same time, like I love playing Spire Scope, like uh, I love it, like not competitively, of course, but uh, you know, I love the weapon, I love the the feel of the weapon, uh, but I know how it feels to be on the opposite end when uh, an EO leader is in uh, some part of the map, uh, say a Splatoon one arrow on a mall, and you basically lose the game if they are skilled, and that's you know, that's a little. Too too much for a, a single weapon. So yeah, we, we we would like chargers to be good, but we don't want chargers to be so good that they define every time they play. They define the outcome directly based on their personal accuracy. The game is about eight people, not necessarily about one person's ability to hit shots. Yeah. So like one thing I don't want like next time we make make the tier list is that there's like one more tier list for elite that's like S++ or something. <laughs> like, it can still be like fun weapon to play and a worthwhile weapon to play and at the same time everything else can also be viable, everything else can still have a proper game and uh, they get advantage of elite's weaknesses. So, that's just one example. Yeah. But like, other thing like maybe suitable to talk about at this section is like Dynamo, like... Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, if you, if you go to Twitter at all and maybe you see some retweets like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Especially Japan had like a lot of Dynamo mains that are, uh, to put it mildly, pre pretty down on you know the new, yeah, yeah. the new, di new Dynamo, <laughs> new, new, new and improved Dynamo. Yeah, not, so not exactly improved. yeah, so like, uh, well, the current okay, let's let's say this like the first okay, the current kid in the game is uh, multiple, not the best for the weapon with Stingray and uh, whatever yeah, the sub is. Ink mine. With Ink Mine, okay, well, Ink Mine, I, I can say about Stingray, come on, man. But even, even like the <laughs> mechanics of the weapon, like you just go to Twitter and see people aim in the air and the ink just disappears, and like, I, I just can't understand. Like, it feels like they were completely overboard with every, everything that people ever complained in the first game, and they're like, let's nerf this quick, like, oh my god, like, how, how can people deal with this? Like, okay, well, TSU Fan they're like, <laughs> how, how how about it doesn't like uh, ink at all if you aim it upwards, <laughs> also known as how every good dynamo main aims. So like, how do you expect it to go over? Like every every like years of muscle memory like gone. Like it just shouldn't be like this. I, I, it's not necessarily a right or wrong thing, but an interesting point is that Sendo mentioned Japan had a lot of dynamo mains. Not only did it have a lot of dynamo mains, but there was a lot of. Uh, pride in the Dynamo and its ability to support its team, paint the map, get specials, and uh, one player that I'm sure most people know from uh, NIS and then NK and Japanese scene is Dynamon, who is in the uh, Splatoon 2 Inkling Invitational, or uh, I'm, I think that was the name of it. Yeah. You know the E3 tournament, and uh, this player Dynamon is, uh, if not the most respected, you know one of at least you know top one, two, three, whatever. Uh, the most respected player in the entire scene. They're, they're, you know, this guy is adored for dominating Splatoon 1 for two years with uh, Dynamo. And uh, to see him play Tri Slosher, uh, his name is his name is Dynamon after Dynamo. I mean, he literally loves, you know, the weapon more than I love Tenetech, more than Sendel loved Luna, and more, you know. Mm -hmm. but, you know, this man is defined by the weapon that he uh, used to play. And to see him play Tri Slosher, you know something is horribly wrong. Yeah, and to go further, what Sendo said, the Dynamo has what seems to be like regular roller range. It, it makes no sense. It, it doesn't paint well. 
When uh, we have a Dynamo player, ex-Dynamo player that we play with on Team Olive all the time, his name is Gray, he's from a French player, and uh, he tried out Dynamo multiple times, and, you know, to listen to him talk about it with such disdain, like, I can't do anything, to see on Splatnet, to see Bottom Ink with this weapon is just awkward, like, you know, it's uncomfortable, <laughs> like, it's not something that should be, it's right in the world, like, it seems like we're out of whack. But and, uh, I, I think it's also, like, unfair to those people, because think about, it, if you played, like, uh, 2,000 hours of Dynamo, then, of course, you, you, you gotta like the weapon to do that, like, you don't do it just because it's meta or whatever, you have to like the mechanics. So you buy Splatoon mm -hmm. too, well, it's a Splatoon in the cover, so you expect certain experience. So for me, if I wanna play Luna, yeah, maybe it's not as good in Splatoon 1, but it's still like viable option and the, like the mechanics from the first game are largely the same and you can expect same kind of performance and whatnot. So that's the difference with Dynamo and maybe maybe Elite are also like from previous section is that they, you can't really play it the same way you used to, like in the slightest. So yeah, that's sure. like something that to me like is more important than any tier list or anything is that Okay, well, if you play the weapon in Splatoon 1, it also has to, like, have some resemblance to the, the like, the one in Splatoon 2. And you just can't, like, nerf it to hell just because people complain. And, I mean, it, it's just like Dynamo was a top tier weapon, but you look at something like Carbon and... You, you see Twitter videos where Rocket has a video on his Twitter where he, like, flicks almost dead center with Carbon and deals out 99 damage. Like, that's so pathetic. And this is not a good weapon, like, it's not a high tier weapon for Splatoon 1, like, in, in any sense of the word. Like, yeah, Azura weapon people complain about a lot, but I have to think about some things that Nintendo really just go to Reddit, slash Ares, slash Splatoon, and, like, <laughs> look at the top Reddit post of all time and check what weapon they complain and send that as feedback to the dev team, or, like, how did we end up in the situation where yeah. some weapons are, like, uh, almost, like, laughable at the moment. So... Yeah, and, uh... Yeah, I mean, I, I, as I've said multiple times, I just want to make sure we get the point across that we're not, like, uh, haters of any, any like, uh, sort of weapon in the sense that we just blindly hope that it becomes horrible. Uh, I was maybe, before uh, before NSTC really disbanded, I was probably the person who complained about Dynamo more than any other person on the planet. But seeing it like this I mean, it's sad it, it, it doesn't belong it, it doesn't make sense to have such an iconic powerful weapon become such uh garbage like yeah exactly like it, 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 it truly it's, is yeah yeah exactly and e leader it's the same thing with e leader like yeah of course i said this on this you know on this video already it's so frustrating to die to an e leader but you know, there's a respect and an expectation with the weapon at this point you cannot uh, just decide it the sequel comes and suddenly you have ten attack with the same exact kid almost, and the uh, same exact uh, popularity and uh, results, in, you know, in the early stages, and uh, have the other you know, that meta defining weapons and uh, game defining weapons of their specific classes become utter trash. It's just not really fair to like send us up to the players that devoted you know hundreds, if not thousands, of hours to the weapon that they have come to love. Yeah, exactly. That's something that, uh, as competitive players, it doesn't maybe make a lot of sense, but it's just like people who love the game of Splatoon, you know, it's not something we like to see. So we definitely would be open and happy if these weapons, get, you know, got a little bit of help in the upcoming future patches. Yeah, and that's like the key thing. Like uh, the game is still very much developing, and uh, the task that the development team faced was like incredible. What they put together in just mere two years. And at the same time, they had to like bring all these new features in and new weapons in and revamp the special system. But they also had to like answer all the complaints from Splatoon One. So it's easy to take it overboard, right? So you look at something like Dynamo, you look at all the complaints, and it's easy to forget that there's also people who like really enjoy the weapon and whatnot. But like I said, yeah. patches, patches, patches. Two years of patches. So there's a lot of things that has time to happen. Yeah. So I hope people still like keep posting on Twitter about the. Vi videos and co posting their like complaints like it, do, it yeah. like it, okay always it doesn't seem like anyone's listening but of course Nintendo has like people listening like if they didn't then this game would look nothing like it does now like yeah, there's so yeah, much yeah. things that was fairly like 100% implemented just because people get feedback so I think that's important uh, to remember we, yeah what one last thing is that uh I see this a little bit somewhere some, someone mentioning this on Twitter maybe on uh, discord but uh, I think the general correct this, uh, direction to go right now for the development team would be to buff the bad weapons and stop nerfing the good ones. Because yeah, the, nerf, yeah, yeah. The, the good ones are in a good place, in our, in our opinion, in our general opinion. 
uh, and the bad rings are not. So it, let's you know let's move Let, the let's other first way. buff and then nerf. So one thing yeah, I think yeah. people do often is that okay, you see a weapon, you like uh, nerf, 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 nerf. But they, mm. he, nobody's nobody's uh, like the god who can see like. Well, what happens when we buff this weapon? Because like uh, like we said earlier, everything's related relative to other weapons in the game, and everything mm -hmm. like uh, depends on each other. So, for example, if tomorrow they announce that uh, Illidor now has twice the range and uh, like half the charge time, well, guess what? We probably still wouldn't run four Illidors, but it would like dramatically like affect all the other weapons in the game. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. for example, that would be pretty insane, like nerf to try Slaughter without actually nerfing it. So, mm -hmm. at least my yeah, personal yeah, opinion is that for now, let developers like release more weapons, release more maps, do balance patches, mm -hmm. buff things, and then we can like uh, see where things are. And not do like hasty things where like three slosser, like, is it really so like, it's really like a uh, first week <laughs> so experience. Nice. I think yeah, I think yeah. something like people, I think the Apple sees one who's like been on Twitter at least about this, and so uh, other, other people said it too, because it's like true, and it's very obvious thing. Is that it's just first week? Okay, there might be some really crazy strong things that are simply hard to use or like different from first game, and we are ignoring them right now because of that. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, maybe we don't know because we don't know. Like like we said on, on the side of the video, we don't know. We don't play it one week, so we have to give it some time and have people get like adjusted to the idea that they can pop in karma. Or, like how do we combat this? And also to people listening, like. Uh, like do do it something like if you play for a team like really think about it like for yourself like what can we do to counter like if there are three in karmas then maybe your first instinct shouldn't be go to the feedback section and say can you please put a limit to in karma usage on for next tournament <laughs> like yeah that that seems like the fastest way to deal with it like if they, it can be used it can be used against you but maybe it, the correct option would be to go to screams and you know maybe you know our opponent like maybe maybe ask the opponent who beat you with three in karmas it's like Yo, can we scream against you? Like this really like bustle does. Like we really can figure out what how to deal with this. So mm -hmm. go to scream and figure it out. Like that, like it over with your team, and then you maybe like uh, get more ideas how to deal with this kind of thing. And, uh, and yeah, and, and use use it yourself so that way when you when you inevitably lose yourself, be like, oh my god, we use three ink armors. How could we possibly lose? Yeah. Oh, the other team did X, Y, and Z. Oh, okay, maybe if we do X, Y, and Z, uh, X, uh, yeah, and yeah it's just a learning experience. But uh, yeah, yeah, all of these like affected things, like three slosser, yeah, it's strong. But you know, let's let's buff things first. And uh, so let's go into the next section. So we finish this video under two hours. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Is that? Uh, it's not. It's not a, a skill of mine to be able to finish things. No, I think we we done pretty well. We talked a lot. But uh, just uh, have you had any chance to read that? Uh, Basically, the future kits. Have you paid any attention to those? Because uh, I, I basically listened to you. Okay, you listened to me. So I can uh, lead off on this a bit because yeah, I know yeah, people yeah. want to hear like what uh, what could be, you know. The see, exciting thing, the thing like we don't, we don't know for sure what's coming, but uh, Lin has had uh, well, Lin has been doing Lin things to put it uh, in an understandable way, and now we know some things about the game we shouldn't know. Things that uh, are still to come, so to speak. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, of course, like uh, one thing we mentioned earlier, and it's definitely a huge thing to consider in Splatoon, the nature of Splatoon is that they can announce tomorrow, well, Hydra's coming. Hydra has Ink Armor and Shaz is in 100p farm. Well, guess what? Then tomorrow everyone's running Hydra. That's so simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we, everything that's released affects everything that the game is now. But uh, yeah. uh, just like. Uh, to give us like some examples of kits, for example, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, going, just, going through a couple just, of things, yeah. just looking like the future kits. Well, Rapid is getting a really like strong and offensive kit if uh, we go by this uh, list with uh, suction bomb and uh, and uh, I'm just Google taking them out so I don't make mistakes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, just take a couple. Of so suction like, bomb and ink chat, which is like. Uh, well, that would be like the ten that kid in my mind in Splatoon too. Like, mm -hmm. not not yeah, yeah. bad bombing chat, so but like a more offensive, uh, you know, yeah. option. If you feel like your team uh, is not pushing, your team is horrible. They can't uh, get on tower or something. Yeah, you just team. kill them all with suction things. So that's, uh, that's a good plan. Like rabbit is strong now. Well, it's even more offensive with this kid. So good option. Really excited to see how it plays out. And another kit for top tier weapon: three slots or new bow. 
<laughs> this is a uh, I call this the hard counter to fuzzy. Like if you if you play against oh, just, no, just, <laughs> just run for four of these with spat bomb and auto bomb launcher. Auto bomb launcher. <laughs> so that will be um, to put it one way, it will be interesting to see how it plays out. <laughs> because <laughs> uh, do do the H H three D and ninety six uh, deco. I think those are those are like uh, kits we know and love in Splatoon one. Uh, they get like a revamp rework in Splatoon two. I think that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I think H uh, three not knows D. That's uh, I think really interesting kit with sprinkler and in karma. Mm -hmm. So, so that... reminiscent of bu bubble wall of the cherry in the old game, and ninety six deco is uh, well, splash wall and splash down, right? So so again uh, like uh, you know. And similar Next to sticker. the old 96 deck. So that's pretty cool in my opinion. You get like a reworked, re-understood, reimagined yeah, kit. Like the, uh, oh. Yeah, that's the thing. Like a common theme seems to me to be that uh, many of them like re in like uh, for example like okay we don't have the same specials of course we can bring the same kit back like one to one but they still try to like understand what people love with about these weapons and bring it back and I think that's yeah. that's really the that's exciting part. Really cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think yeah. I think that's a source like the developers really do like have a lot of like love for the game and they do really understand that they said it in an interview I believe that they understand that every weapon has like a fan base now like every weapon gets like a huge amount of fan art like look something like L3 like look how many like mm -hmm. hundreds of pictures mm -hmm. they are like about L3 like you have yeah, many yeah, artists sure. like devote like oh, there are so much like L3 fan art like you have Donut like uh, mm -hmm. there are great art and uh, likes L3 a lot so who would someone like Donut be like coming to Splatoon 2 and play the L3 is nothing like in the first game? So I think that's really yeah, cool, yeah. like keeping the spirit of the kids up in the yeah, yeah, yeah. Splatoon 2. And it's important too for the more casual players, um, maybe who, who don't really want to change, they just want to have better graphics, have more options, to. they want to be able to say ouch when they die. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, and all the. Like like we said, we are competitive players first, but we also love this game like mm -hmm. to the very core. So uh, I mean, that's why we are competitive like, players because we love. Yeah, the game. yeah, true, of course. So uh, all all these little things that maybe just seem like oh maybe lazy. Maybe some people will say oh this is lazy. They just uh, copied it back. But uh, at the other time, just you know, take a moment and think about the millions of people who do play this game that are not uh, you know who mm -hmm. think you know all different ways, all, all different age groups and. Uh, backgrounds and all sorts of things and you know maybe there's someone who just truly loves uh silver air spray with uh seeker so now they have curling bomb rush or something you know things, i mean i'm just giving an example but, yeah yeah of course of course and uh, uh I, it's cool. I think uh one more i could mention is uh dynamo if this kit like again okay with all of these kits it's just in the data it doesn't mean it's coming out neither might make a patch and change these things i think dynamo is mm -hmm. one of the examples and lean said that it's no longer in the data so they get everything like we spec. It's just they get the speculation basically, like what could be. Like we don't know if it's gonna be the Nintendo puts on Twitter that this is coming now and this has this kit. But like just fun speculation for now. With Dynamo kit, if it's true, like if it or if it can see equally strong kit with uh, Toxic Mist and Ink Armor. So that's something like we talked uh, like before is that Dynamo is in a bad spot. Well, I think uh, just giving it small buffs and this strong kit could already make it a. Uh, really viable like high tier option like nothing like mm -hmm. crazy nothing like broken ending but still like nothing like sad either you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so and keeping keeping the uh idea that they want uh so it's uh something that i i never really mentioned but uh, the nintendo wants dynamo to be uh basically like this defensive monster this defensive like uh wall basically uh, they want it to be this big defensive inking powerhouse and uh uh i guess in a sense like this this gold dynamo kit potentially kind of has that imagination with the toxic mist like denying an area and then the ink armor obviously the most you know supportive special basically there is a reminiscent of echo in a sense a global a global special mm -hmm. on the uh, dynamo roller so like they in a sense they're keeping the uh the mindset, the the spirit of the weapon, a little bit better with this kit potentially. Anyway, so that's something that I look forward to. I look forward to seeing the Dynamo players use a kit that they feel you know more at home with. Yeah, exactly. We'll see what happens. And uh, I think one again popular new weapon, new weapon type, new weapon category. Many people say it's meta, but what do you say about Splatbrella? Like from what we know, 
could you say that this weapon could be something that uh, really is lo like uh, necessary for team comps or? Uh, oh, well first I think the uh, shooting the umbrella as a projectile shield thing, I'm not sure like what the damage calc is, what the, if it has uh, X amount of health, if it's invincible, whatever. I, you know, we don't really know much, but I will say that uh, I played Overwatch and I've uh, played with Reinhardt and without Reinhardt. I will say it makes a lot of difference. I think it's super, a super cool idea, like potentially. Anyway, I think uh, if something like a shield it makes the game, that's so cool. Like a mobile shield, a person that literally can protect his or her teammates, you know, with something. That's really cool. Uh, as far as I know, playing through single player, you actually get to play the umbrella in single player for a couple stages and then you could play it throughout the whole thing. It doesn't uh, one-shot kill. It's like a shotgun type spread. I don't think. I think it's a two-shot kill. Yeah. Uh, which is fair because I think if it was a one-shot kill, like a shooter version of a Luna Blaster, that might be a little frustrating for people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Uh, you know, basically, I'm no expert on uh, playing Reinhardt, so I'm no expert on uh, Umbrella uh, tactics. But I do think it's very interesting. I would love to see it in my the first day it comes out. I would love to watch uh, not myself, but one of my teammates shoot the umbrella down some uh, street in Port Mackerel and like just try to <laughs> see make what it happens. Foot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like see if it's like a <laughs> some unstoppable strat or something. But you know, I, I think it opens up uh, team composition. Yeah, like, for in, sure. Uh, like support, uh, you know, defense uh, style or whatever, you know, not. Yeah, uh, yeah, it doesn't have this name underneath it, but you know, given that uh, idea, which is again, it's so cool to have uh, options, to have multiple viable options instead of saying, ah, uh, man, all right, we're playing. Oh, uh, we all live in uh, New York, so I think we all main one weapon and one weapon only. That's the uh, tactics water shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like, uh, yeah, yeah, like we mentioned then. It's like something always to be kept in mind is that okay, Splat Splatbrella releases. We don't know what it means. We don't know like, is it something that people are gonna play as fun in the for, or is it something people are actually gonna like uh, need in team comps? And how does it change everything? Like, can it like support more defensive team comps or team comps like a almost like a tank role in Splatoon, which is kind of like an yeah, yeah, interesting yeah. prospect. So, like, qu quite hard to say before actually trying it out. But definitely, like these things are. Really interesting. I, I think I believe uh, unless it was a mistranslation, and they also said they have other new weapon categories in uh, development. So this uh, this can yeah. be potential like huge changes. Like you look at something like Splatoon One and uh, Spatling and Bucket. Like these yeah, these yeah. were weapon categories that were not available at launch. So definitely like always mm -hmm. keeping an open mind for the, what you know what might yeah. be next on the Twitter. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, with the duelies we have the spot. Uh, dually scroll triggers, which basically are just the same thing with longer range. And while these are may or may not be meta defining, it, it's, it's changing it up. You know, it's something new, it's something fresh to think something about. New, something new, something new. And like, yeah. uh, I'm sure, like, some there will be some people that will be like insane with it. Like, I don't know, like, some next level jukes with the dashing mm -hmm. mechanic or whatever. Like, you just like you just can't know everything for yourself until you see it and like seeing is believing us yeah. all the same so, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so like for me like I, I see someone work it really well I get like excited and uh, I wanna yeah, 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 exactly. try it myself so definitely like mm -hmm. many of these things have we just need someone to spearhead the weapon and yeah, yeah. I well, think uh, yeah, yeah. it's yeah, yeah. Really team, interesting. team Olive we don't uh, have weapon expertise over all weapons we don't create and uh, dictate the meta yeah uh, yeah we, we just have a like own mind and all mindset what could work yeah. and yeah so uh, we we have limitations too so when we do see someone in like a random squad just that, like doing insane things with x or y weapon we're like hey man that was so cool let's uh you know see how this even happened like what did this guy do Stuff like yeah that. but like we are just I, I, we but, want everyone to do that we want everyone to be trying all these things so that everyone else could pick it up everyone else can understand we could all get better really yeah it's cool. but it's like uh important to think about like Splatoon as community, like we just one team can't be like Fuzzy Z can't be the expertise of every weapon. Like for example, like I'll, I'll give a very like good example of this is like Dynamo. Well, mm -hmm. we knew Dynamo was strong. How did we knew it was strong? Because we played people who destroyed us with Dynamo. We like yeah, really yeah. like uh, really like uh, like really painful to play against. Like really, yeah, we are, played Dynamo. On. Yeah, so we like played. almost three months we argued who was gonna like main dynamo you know and like <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's definitely like uh, 
something that you see in some other team and you're like, well, hey, how could we do this? And then maybe someone gets excited about playing the weapon and sometimes someone doesn't get excited, but still it's interesting to have all this option. Yeah, yeah. But uh, almost could probably wrap this with up soon with the one hour, okay. 15 minutes or so long. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like uh, just say again, like just one week, we just couple guys who like this game. It doesn't mean like we we know the best or like this is the only truth and you know if you disagree then you are automatically wrong like you might might be wrong or you might be right you know no one knows we'll know in the future we know when uh, certain teams start winning tournaments with certain weapons we can start thinking well maybe these weapons are strong like that's that's what it comes down to in the end yeah, 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 and we're, we're like Sandra said, we're two people that like the game, but we're uh, students of the game. Like, uh, I don't necessarily want to, you know, go into a tournament and not think about anything, not care about anything, and go three zero every single team, and then, uh, you know, turn my switch off. I, I would love to learn. I mean, I have learned throughout my entire career from players from all sorts of weapons backgrounds. Uh, I don't know them. They stream. They don't stream. They're American, European, Japanese. Uh, you know, whatever, and not, none of that really matters. The whole point is that we we want everyone to be getting better and lo looking towards this game in like a competitive standpoint, so that we can all enjoy the game, you know, together and improve together. And so that's the only way we're all, you know, that's the only way we this team will uh, you know, thrive and survive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Like uh, many people focus on the rivalries on like whatever like uh, disparities that people have, but like this is like. Uh, you know, like every every community, there's gonna be people like disagreeing on things. So like that's normal. Like if you in in real life, like that's what it is. People disagree sometimes, but at the end of the day, like we have to remember why we are here in the first place, which should be love for the game. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like this sounds so cheesy when I say it aloud, but this is so this is that's the truth. That that that's yeah, a, that's just the truth. Like uh, like okay, like you, you can find like uh, I probably can find like 100, 100 reasons to hate any single individual you name me. But like instead of focusing on that, maybe just focus on the fact that okay, you know, they like Splatoon, I like Splatoon, you know. That's still like a pretty cool thing uh, we have been doing here for two years and I think uh, Splatoon 2 and wherever it, it takes us or wherever the weapon or the meta score or whatever, it's still like uh, exciting new times for everyone and I hope people like enjoy experimenting with weapons and enjoy like uh, trying out the bro broken things and enjoy trying out finding out the solution to these broken things and noticing that maybe they're not as broken as they first thought and you know just mm -hmm. enjoying the journey really yeah 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 i couldn't say it better myself i agree and uh yeah uh, i think uh that's pretty much it unless you have something else to say uh no yeah yeah, yeah. i mean oh, yeah. i basically uh... i do have fun to say i'm so sorry about my yeah, 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 yeah. run gameplay because i promise you i was reading the notes so sometimes i just blast down of the boat and stuff <laughs> <laughs> so you know this is not this is not to be like the metric of my Sunrun performance. I'm uh, actually S plus nine now. It is for real. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we'll probably make an update at some point when you know things change, things get released. We'll make, probably make then the video. But for now, just uh, you have comments. You wanna ask something? You wanna add something to what we said? And you know, just leave a comment. Uh, and, yeah. uh, we're, we're more than uh, open to like hearing what people have to say. It's the whole reason we're basically making this video. Is so we want we want to you know someone will start the conversation. And maybe it'll be us. Like you know we want to have this uh, productive conversations. We want to like you know really explore what's going on instead of uh, you know sitting in our little bubbles. Yeah. So yeah. If sure. you have something good or bad to say, you know, as pertaining to tier lists, uh, what you think about the meta weapons. Uh, why Splatoon is the best game ever? Splatoon is horrible. What did they do wrong? What did they do right? We would enjoy to hear it all, so that we could uh, have some dialogue and get a better understanding. Because, uh, like we said, we're only two guys. We only have a team of five players mm -hmm. that we talk to, you know, every day. Yeah, we, we don't know everything. Yeah, I, 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 like just to bring one another example in. Like we talk about Nike, and let's talk about one more. Like Nike's mm -hmm. attitude is this: Well, Charles sucks, so I play Anza. Then, like he doesn't really mind like some people think of nike as the chelsea player but he himself like uh, i feel like i know nike as someone who just is uh, has a really good competitive mindset in that he'd always uh, managed to choose the strongest thing and become really strong with it so that's nike to mm -hmm. me but uh some other people like i seem some people are genuinely like uh, disheartened about 
the changes I, to them made to their main weapon or whatnot. And I, I don't think like uh, the solution is to ridicule these people or something or like some kind of empathy would probably be in place in that like you know if, if Splatoon's like if if you like really like like, like Splatoon and you know maybe the new game like maybe the weapons aren't as as you like and you see yourself as the charter player or you see yourself as the animal player and it's not quite the same for everyone so it's just you know you in this together so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 for sure. But uh, yeah, I think uh, that's about it. So yeah, Sounds see you later. Yep. Yeah. See you later, Sunday.